Good afternoon, everyone. As stated, I'm Heather Vollmer, and today I'm going to be discussing with you applying ArcGIS online tools to coastal management applications. A coastal GIS analyst plays a supporting role to the project management team. And while we do many tasks, we do have a couple key functions. The first is data translator. And this is where we take information from the different disciplines that we work with and create a tangible product that can be consumed by general audiences. Our next key function builds on this, and we provide the big picture. And what I mean by that, that's the aha moment when you've displayed your spatial phenomenon in such a way that a general audience can get your intended message very easily. And lastly, perhaps our most important key function is providing the best tool for the job. Technology is constantly changing, and we need to educate ourselves and make sure that we're applying the best tools so our other key functions are performing well. For us, we decided Esri Online Tools would help us achieve this. Our first foray into online tools was Survey123. So we had a bulkhead inspection job come into the office, and we were able to convince project management to allow us to use our field guys as guinea pigs on Survey123 with this project. We wanted to create a clear, concise, easy-to-fill-out form that anyone could use. And what you see up here is a screenshot of that form. In the interest of time, I would just like to talk about some of the neat features that we found helpful in this tool. Uh, the first one is going to be this photo repeat. As we were designing this form and we were discussing with the field inspectors, there was a need for them to take photos out in the field, but they couldn't give us a definitive number. In order to mitigate this, we just added the repeat function to the photo tool, and they could take as many or as little photos as they wanted out in the field. The next thing we did was we designed collapsible attributes for the inspection. So down here, you can see the various inspection elements. And if you open up uh, and expand that element, you'll see the actual attributes that have to be filled out for each inspection element. These were designed to be simple yes-no questions, and they're conditional. So if you're out in the field and you see, for example, transverse cracks, and you answer yes, additional attribution will pop up for you to fill out. If you answer no, you just move on to your next attribute. We found this tool very useful for this project, and we found some good pros. The first was the post-processing post time was drastically reduced. Before we used Survey123, our field inspectors would go out with pen and paper. Uh, once they got back in from the field, they'd have to enter all that into the computer. We also found that we were having better database consistency. When you use that pen and paper method, a lot of people will give similar answers, but not the same answer, so it makes it harder to analyze the information. And we wanted to create an easy-to-use interactive form, and we found that when we did this, it reduced data collection time once our field guys were comfortable using the app. Now, we did have a couple lessons we learned. The first is end user training. And what I mean by this is making sure that your end user is comfortable with the technology. They were fine with filling out the form, but they didn't quite understand how the data was going to live update back to the server in the office. So it's really important to make sure that your field guides have confidence in the tools they're using. The next lesson we learned was we had decided to use this project as a test for GPS cell phone accuracy. Uh, for us, it's not accurate enough. Because Survey123 worked well and our field guys relatively embraced it, we decided to add Data Collector to our workflow. And here, we have a really great example of where Data Collector can really shine. This is an example of a rapid seawall assessment survey. So it's part of a coastal resiliency study, and what that means is an inspector is going to be on a boat and slowly driving down those canals and visually inspecting the seawall to see the current condition. 
It's quick. They have a very limited time frame, so we had to give them a tool that they could fill out efficiently. With the data collector, we narrowed it down to the four attributes here and put them in as dropdowns. This worked very well. And after the first day, we were able to make it even more efficient because in the first day, we learned that most of the seawalls we were looking at were material of concrete. So we just went back into the data collector and set that as the default. So they only had to change that attribute if they happened upon something that wasn't concrete. 90% of the area is concrete, so it definitely increased efficiency. We also wanted to build in confidence as they were going along and they knew they were collecting the data. So we added symbology to the polygons to one of the attributes, so as they were assessing it, they could see on their phone in the field the color of the polygon change, and they knew that they had uh, captured that seawall and the attributes about it, and they could move on. We had another data collector project that we used where we were working on looking at shoreline access points with Maui County in Hawaii. Again, we wanted to be really efficient in our data collection because we had a ton of attributes that they wanted to capture about these access points. So we went ahead and again designed the attributes beforehand, set up the can answers as a drop down menu. We also wanted to be able to go out in the field without a bunch of cumbersome GPS equipment, so we decided to deploy the app on a cell phone, but this time we used a Trimble GRNSSR1 receiver and connected to the county base station. This improved the accuracy of the data collector enough that we were able to utilize it for this particular project. Same pros as before, your post-processing time is going to be reduced. Your database consistency, especially using dropdowns, is going to be awesome. Uh, another thing that I'd like to mention is when you're working out online with the data collector, you can see those uh, instant updates in your database back at the office. This is great for managing field crews, for giving progress reports to your client. It's a nice feature. Uh, again. We had some lessons learned. Uh, anybody who's familiar with Hawaii might know that uh, cell phone service isn't always uh, great. So we wound up figuring out that it was easier for us to work offline. So in the data collector app, you can just download your uh, map and the extent you're looking at for that particular day, and you can use the GPS receiver and just go along and collect everything you need and upload it later. End user patience, what do I mean by this? Uh, we had notes fields, and if you're working with someone who isn't comfortable using certain equipment, say a cell phone and the cell phone's keyboard, they're gonna get really frustrated really fast if they wanna put a paragraph into that notes field. Uh, field updates, I'm gonna say we learned some lessons on those. When you're using data collector, if you decide to collect something like photographs and you're using your camera inside the app, it's important to note that it doesn't save it back to your camera roll. So if it, you're doing online work and it doesn't upload to your server and you just go ahead and start taking more photographs, you've lost that picture. So you want to make sure that you go and double check, take a few seconds, that everything you expected to upload is there before you move on to your next area. We also decided to take a look at web apps, and this is one of my favorite web apps. It's a very good example of how you can set up something very quickly. Uh, this is a Red Tide app that we had created, and we had a very short time frame and a very small budget, and what it was was we were getting phone calls about the biological debris out in the field, and we would have to go out and inspect the areas to see, you know, is there a problem with biological debris and where do cleanups need to occur? So all these data points represent the daily calls, and we were looking for areas of concentrations of those calls. Because the budget was so small, the project manager wanted hard copy maps. So we decided we were going to convince him that we could deploy this in a few hours and it would be much more effective for the field crew because they could zoom in and actually navigate to those areas much easier than trying to do it on a hard copy map. And we were able to do that. 
very effectively. And in the end, the project manager was happy, which is usually our goal. <laughs> we also worked on customizing our web apps. Now, this is a really cool site. It's public. You guys can go check it out in your spare time if you want to. It is the core regional sediment management site. And that's basically a program that records how sediment is being dredged and placed back into the environment. I just want to talk about some of the neat features that we wound up building into the site that were actually driven by our end users and our client needs, things that we might not necessarily have thought of. Uh, the first one was the legend to the left here. You have different placement types, but if you're not familiar with the program, you might not know exactly what we mean by the short description in the legend. So we went ahead and built up a hover text. So when you're on the site, if you hover over any one of those legend items, a more detailed description will come up. This is also a great site because we look at our data results from a regional scale as well as a local scale. So at this level, you have the districts and how they're performing. And then as you zoom in, you get to see the individual dredge projects and how they are performing. Uh, while we were working on this project, we were simultaneously working on the ASBPA beach nourishment site. Now, these are two separate projects, but they're related. And about two to three years into the projects, the client decided they wanted to be able to see the data together, but they didn't want the sites together. So rather than create a third site and be redundant, we decided to add this feature in the upper left corner there. And you can check off that button and what will appear are these little yellow dots, and those are individual beach nourishment sites. And what's cool about that is you can click on the pop-up, get some generalized information, and then there's a link below. Now, if you click this link, it will take you to our other public site at the same exact extent. And while you're on that site, if you'd like to look back at the regional management, we have simplified data there as well. And if you click it, you could go back to another area, same extent. The pros of web apps are they're visually engaging. They really have your client and your end user get excited about your data more than paper maps and reports can. They're great for the big picture. It's very easy to convey what you're trying to say in these apps. They're awesome for communication with non-GIS personnel because they can see what you're doing easily, they can interact with the data, and it gives your data a kind of transparency. Leveraging other technology is great. You can add sites, uh, websites, to the shoreline access. We use the 360 camera and linked to a 360 app where you could see what's going on at that shoreline access. Uh, and again, basic apps can be done rather quickly. Uh, lessons learned and user skill set. Uh, we have a disadvantage. We use these tools all the time, so we're really comfortable. So we might think something's easy, and then you hand it off to someone else, and they have no clue how to use it. So you want to find someone who's not comfortable with technology, and if they can use it, you did a good job. Uh, you may need additional programming. Esri has some great online tools for building these apps, but there are going to be things that come up that you're going to have to know how to program in. So if you have that skill set, awesome. If not, learn it. Uh, and most importantly, sometimes technology fails. What do I mean by this? This is uh, a good example. The core site was taken to a conference by our subconsultant, and Google servers failed that day. I don't know if you remember, it was a couple years ago, and it was out of our control. We had no way to access the site, and it was down. So we had to come up with a quick contingency plan B. As we move to these online sites, there's going to be a lot of things beyond your control. Always have a plan B. So if you're jazzed and you're ready to get into online apps, we have some recommendations. Communication is key, not just with your team, but your end users, your clients. Talk to them about what they need. Uh, accessibility. How are they going to use this app? you're going to design an app for your cell phone much different than one you're going to use on the computer. No one's going to want to look at that core site on their cell phone. That's a desktop application. Flexibility, meaning you're going to get great ideas from non-GIS people, so be open to them. Be ready to add those tools in. Uh, end user skill set, again, can anybody who use it? And establish good IT relationships. 
If you're like me, you work in a large company, big server, you're going to find hiccups with the technology. You want somebody on your IT team who can support you and figure out those problems and troubleshoot. In conclusion, web apps improve collaboration. They're incredibly visually engaging, fun to use. Getting, easy is very, uh, getting started is very easy. Don't be intimidated. It increases efficiency and decreases cost. And this makes for happy clients which is our main goal. Thank you all. Any questions?